The UTPA volleyball team opened WAC play at home against the top four teams in the conference. We'll see how they did. Take a trip to the U.S. Amateur Championship with Bronx golfer Chris Felix. And get your tissue boxes ready. Bronx baseball and women's basketball are ready to warm your hearts. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Pan American joined the Western Athletic Conference over the summer, and after much anticipation, the Bronx hosted the first WAC contest in school history over the last week, with volleyball matches against New Mexico State, Utah Valley, Idaho, and Seattle. After winning the first set against defending champion New Mexico State, the Aggies took the next three, and then Utah Valley swept the Bronx 48 hours later. Idaho came to town on Thursday, and this was a match that you had to see to appreciate how tight it was. Opening set, Haley Durham comes up with the kill to bring the Bronx within 22-19, but Idaho takes the set 25-20. Second set, Bronx by one, make it two. Alicia Watson puts the Bronx up 11-9. Next serve, Casey Sanchez. She had a huge week. We'll see more of Sanchez a little later on in the show. Move ahead, Bronx lead whittled to one, and Maria Klefok makes it two again. The Bronx led 2018, but Idaho comes back to win the set 25-23. Now back to Durham. She had four early third set kills to stake the Bronx to a 5-2 lead, but Idaho sweeps the match three to nothing. Durham finished with a career high 15 kills, seven of which came in the final set. Durham hit 357 for the match. You know, I'm proud of the way we played uh, after how we played on Monday. You know, we were a much better team tonight. You know, it's unfortunate we had that early injury and that kind of threw us into a little, a little tizzy, I guess. But uh, the kids bounced back from it. They just fought hard for their teammates. Uh, you know, we, we put a good match together, a very winnable match. But, uh, you know, the fact that we were better and, and got better tonight will, you know, will bode well for the future. Quick turnaround for the Bronx as Seattle came in 24 hours later. And the Bronx were down six late in the first set. It was 20 to 14, but now it's 22-21 when Alicia Watson and Haley Durham combine on a block to tie the set. Next serve, Casey Sanchez. Caps a 9-2 run by giving the Bronx a 23-22 lead. Now Seattle gets the next two. Bronx needs a score to extend the set, and Durham does just that. Tied at 24. Moments later, it's Durham again, and the Bronx have set points. After Seattle ties it, watch this move by Krista Freitas. Gives the Bronx a 26-25 lead. Now the Redhawks come back to win the set 28-26, and when we move ahead to the third set, the Redhawks are up 2-0 in the match. The Bronx, undeterred. Sanchez makes it 14-11 Bronx. How about a little more Freitas? Makes it 19-14 Bronx. And then we end the highlight the same way we started it, with a block by Watson and Durham. Brock snap an 11 set losing streak by taking the third set, but go on to fall in four. Freitas led the Bronx with 12 kills and 12 digs. Shanice Faison made her first start at Libero and had a season high 23 digs. Second night in a row, the Bronx came out on the short end of a tight match. Coach, your thoughts? Both teams played really well. It was you know, an entertaining match from, from my vantage point. Hopefully it was from everybody else's. Uh, you know, some key mental errors at, at times for us, uh, you know, 11 service errors in the first two sets, and it's going to be impossible to win when, when you do that. Uh, you know, we cut them down in, in set three, and that was, you know, that was positive for us, and that was the reason we won. Set four, we started off like we did set one and set two. You know, a couple of key service errors, back-to-back -back service errors, and that's really what put us in the hole. Um, you know, we've got to learn from that. We've got to come back. It's something that, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's you know we work on it all the time, and why you know the the game, the lights come on. I don't know what it is that you know why we're missing that way, but uh, you know we've got to we've got to get better. One player who has been getting better is local product Casey Sanchez of San Benito. The sophomore earned honorable mention in the WAC Player of the Week balloting after posting a combined 21 kills and 19 digs over the last two matches. I'm so proud of her. You know she's coming out. She's really one of the ones right now that has no fear. You know, she'll make a mistake and, you know, she just bounces right back. Uh, she's a mentally tough kid. She's a hard worker. And to see it paying off for her is, is really encouraging. And like I said, I'm just really proud of her. And while it's been a tough start for the Bronx against the top four teams in the WAC, 
The excitement around campus for finally playing WAC contests after nine months of waiting is palpable. Romeo Villarreal has more. A uh, great day for our coaches, great day for our student athletes, and I can tell you, we couldn't be any more excited. I know July 1's a big day, but I think for most of the sports, the biggest day is going to be that first day of practice and our first competition uh, against WAC competition. That first day of competition came September 28th when the volleyball team faced New Mexico State, making them the first UTPA athletes to participate in WAC play. Being able to compete in the WAC means you can elevate you know, the type of athletes that you recruit, the student athletes that you bring in the UTPA. You know, obviously you get more money for being in a conference and obviously the level of competition you're going to face. I mean, it's, it's good for the university, good for the community. I'm really happy that we're in the WAC. It's for us clearly a good opportunity to show what we're capable of doing and playing such good teams. It's a good opportunity for us. This year, this WAC is it's going to be very competitive. You know, more teams, as you can see, the banners are up. And I'm just looking forward to it. I just can't wait. And we're going to show y'all what we got. Well, I think as every year that passes by and we're in the WAC, we're going to get better and better because it really, the, the biggest key uh, besides being able to play for championships is recruiting. And now being in the WAC that we're able to play for championships, we'll be able to recruit a lot more and a lot better uh, than we have in the past. Well, you know, we got in uh, December 18, 2012, so it's been a long time coming. Uh, it was an exciting day when we were had the press conference announced we were going to the WAC, but today is just probably a little bit more exciting for myself as the athletic director and all the coaches. I want to see more and more students out here watching the games. I want to see us build rivalries against teams because now we're in a conference for good so we can really build rivalries and want to win bad. If you've been following the countdown to tip off on the UTPA Bronx Instagram account, and I know you have been, you know we're just 29 days away from tipping off the college basketball seasons, and you know what that means. We're talking about practice. Here's Khadija Zarate with a report on UTPA men's basketball. The 2013-2014 UTPA men's basketball team opens up the season on November 8th. For now though, it's practice every day to get ready for that season opener. Bronx senior guard Hurley Johnson is excited about starting practice 12 days early. Johnson is ready to fast break right into the season. Um, it gives us time to like prepare for the season because we got a new system, we got a new offense, and it gives everybody time to adjust to the offense and learn it. New head coach Dan Hipscher realizes that with a new season in the WAC conference comes higher expectations. Well, the expectations are <clears throat> like any season is you know, to try to get as much out of these group of individuals as I can possibly get, okay? Coach Hipster walks into the first practice with a plan. First 30 to 40 minutes of every practice, a lot of individual fundamental things, okay? Last hour of practice, developing the team structure. So uh, kids are learning, you know, <clears throat> how to play together and uh, how to play as individuals. The bar has been set and the Bronx are ready to play ball. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse, I'm Khadija Sante for Bronx Country. The Bronx opened the season November 8th against Sam Houston State. Now like the UTPA men's basketball team, the women's basketball team has also hit the court and is starting to practice. We'll have a report on them next week on Bronx Country. Bronx basketball season tickets are on sale right now. Men's tickets start at $75, women's tickets start at $50. Doesn't get much better than that. It was a historic summer for one Bronx golfer. Coming up on this edition of Bronx Country, we take a look at Chris Felix's journey to the U.S. Amateur Championship. Here comes Reynolds. Yes! Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines at UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. 
Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. There's a common misconception that when the season ends, or perhaps when the school year ends, student athletes take time off. But as one Bronx golfer proved, sometimes working hard over the summer can lead to a place in the national spotlight. I just didn't really hit me until we hit the plane and we were trying to land in Boston. UTPA junior golfer Chris Felix needed some time to digest the feeling and the news, and maybe it didn't really sink in until he hit the links, but he had earned a trip to the U.S. Amateur Championship by shooting a two-round total of 137 at the qualifying event in Litchfield Park, Arizona. That included a one under 71 in the first round and a career best tying 66 in the second round. I birdied holes 14, 15, and 16, and my caddy and I were talking and like, okay, you can see how this goes in 17. Uh, after I hit my approach shot into the green, I told my caddy to feel my heart and it was just racing. And it was just, it was a good time. One of the first things Felix did was call his coach at UTPA, Josh Fostick. I was out recruiting actually when he sent me the text that, uh, that he had played really well in that last round. Uh, I kind of found uh, a space where I could call him real quick and, and kind of was on the phone and text him back and forth while he was waiting for those last couple groups to come in. And um, I, I mean, I can't, I can't express how excited I was. Uh, for, I knew that, that we really hadn't had anything like that happen at UTPA. And for him to have the summer that he was already having and have it kind of culminate in that, it was really exciting. The list of players who have donned the Bronx green and white includes a few professionals, including UTPA Hall of Famer Mike Brisky, who played seven years on the PGA Tour and three on the Nationwide Tour. So when Felix realized he was the first Bronx to compete in the U.S. Amateur Championship, he focused on representing UTPA, wearing Bronx gear and colors as much as possible. I was really proud when I found out that I was the first one to actually go there. I mean, only one person say they can do that, so I, li I, I liked it. and I. I think I represented us pretty well. Well, it's great advertising, I can tell you that. Um, I think it, it, it adds a little bit of legitimacy to, to our program. Um, I've been using it all summer because, uh, you know, a lot of kids just don't know where we're at. And, and to be able to say, hey, you know, we were able to produce a kid that could play and compete in the U.S. Amateur uh, down here. Uh, not many, like I said, not many people know where this is, but we have great weather, great golf courses, and. Uh, it surprises me that, that he was the first. We, um, we have the ability down here, I think, to kind of produce those kinds of players every single year. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the future. I think we're going to get more players like him. While playing one round at the Charles River Country Club and one round at the Historic Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, Felix finished tied for 302nd out of 312 competitors. Despite that, Coach Fosdick knows that this is the type of experience that can help Felix's confidence. I said regardless of how you do, you just take away the fact that over 7,000 people tried to get in this and you're one of the top 300. So if anything, it should tell them that, that a lot of the hard work, a lot of the, the things that we did at practice all year long, um, a lot of things that, uh, you know, that we talked about throughout the year, I think he finally started to get to see some of that, uh, the results of that, the fruit of that. And so hopefully going forward, he knows that you know, the hard work and dedication keep up that model and, and there's no reason why that has to be the last one he goes to. Well, after all of that, nothing guaranteed for Felix. He is right back here at Los Lagos with his teammates trying to qualify for the next tournament. Our first day of qualifying is today for Chicago State, so hopefully I can start off strong. I told him that. I said, I hope you do well in qualifying because it would be really weird to go to the first tournament without a kid that went to the U.S. Amateur. I think by making the U.S. Amateur, he actually probably made the other guys practice a little bit harder because they want to come beat a U.S. Amateur participant. So, um, it's wide open. Uh, he needs to come out and prove himself just like he would uh, any other time, and, and I'm looking for him to do that. Well, Felix did make the cut for the Bronx first two trips, as they've been to Chicago State and Houston Baptist. He's doing pretty well thus far. Felix and the Bronx are back in action October 21st at Kenesaw State. And while the men had this week off, the women's golf team went to Sam Houston State for their fourth event of the fall. One more to go as the Bronx compete at the UTB Fall Shootout November 1st and 2nd at the South Padre Island Golf Club. UTPA men's tennis also in action, competing in the Ron Westbrook's Invitational at Lamar. One more fall tournament for the Bronx as they take part in the ITA Regionals at Baylor starting October 19th. 
But Bronx baseball and women's basketball are wasting no time getting involved in the community now that the school year has started. Next on Bronx Country, we take a look at the baseball team's fight to help save a young boy's life and the women's basketball team's new little sister. The UTPA baseball team has made a habit of going to bat for those who can't hit for themselves. Two years ago, it was then four-year-old Giada Grace Ortiz in need of blood transfusion in order to stave off aplastic anemia. That led the Bronx to meeting then five-year-old Nolan Naranjo, who had a similar condition. The Bronx had to go into extra innings, however, to pick up a win for Nolan. Roxanne Caceres has more. UTPA's Bronx baseball team hit a home run when they stepped up to the plate to help Nolan Naranjo, an energetic six-year-old boy in the fight of his life when he was diagnosed with MDS or pre-leukemia. We figured out, you know, how can we help him out? How can we make him feel better? Because the guys, it's a tough time for him. Head baseball coach Manny Mantrana heard about Nolan's battle and quickly enlisted his team's help. Uh, it was an easy thing to jump into, um, and you know all the boys on our all of our players are really taking Nolan as their little brother. Since they went to bat for Nolan, the Bronx baseball team was named one of six recipients nationwide of the Tom Walter Inspiration Award. Nolan's mom says it's a fitting tribute. What the coach started to do was inspirational. What the team did as a whole, incredibly inspirational. He calls them his team, so it has gotten him through the tough times of being in the hospital, seeing their support from here, from a distance. Last year, the Bronx hosted a blood drive to benefit little Nolan. When his condition worsened over the summer and he needed a bone marrow transplant, the Bronx once again went to bat for Nolan, hosting a bone marrow drive. Every member of the team registered to become donors. To cover their bases, the players also got 250 people to register to become donors. The athletes even shaved their heads in support of little Nolan. We did it because we tell all, all of our, our players that being part of the program is a gift. They're here, they're on, most of them are on scholarship, they get to play baseball, um, and it's a gift. But in return for that gift, we expect from them to give back to the community. Though they're used to being in the spotlight for their success on the diamond, being recognized as heroes for their commitment to Nolan is a whole new ball game. Nolan starting out as a kid, having that problem, you know, shaving our heads, the Sitting in a chair for 30 minutes to get blood, that's, that's easy stuff. For a while, it was a swing and miss. A full match wasn't found for Nolan, but late last year, his mother donated her bone marrow as a partial match with amazing results. It's been a life lesson for the players. The situation that Nolan went through and his family puts life into perspective. Um, you know what? So what if you strike out four times in a baseball game and we lose a game? At the end of the day, it's a game and it's, it's very, very irrelevant to the real game, and that's the game of life. The UTPA baseball team going the extra inning. If you want to go out and support Bronx baseball this season, they have 27 home games, starting with a seven-game homestand February 14th through 23rd against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Prairie View A&M, and Northwestern State. The Bronx Open WAC play against New Mexico State March 21st through 23rd at Edinburgh Baseball Stadium. For a complete schedule, visit utpabronx.com. And you know what? You should support Bronx baseball and women's basketball because they're at it again. The Bronx are teaming up to host another on-campus bone marrow drive on November 19th, and signing up really is a simple process. The process is very simple to register. Basically, all you have to do is fill out a form, rub the inside of your cheek with a cotton swab, and that places you onto the registry to see if you could be that possible match. We'll have more information on the Bronx baseball and women's basketball bone marrow drive as we get closer. If you can't wait and want to donate now, log on to bethematch.org for more information. One of the first things new women's basketball head coach Larry Tidwell did when he took over in April was stress the importance of being active in the community. It was more than just talk for the veteran coach, as he has taken his team all over the Rio Grande Valley in the spring, summer, and early fall. They've done everything from helping to build a house for Habitat for Humanity to visiting the Doctors Hospital at Renaissance Children's Center four times. And now, one of the children they visited is a part of the family. Marianne Garcia has more. We're going to get out and we're going to be in the community and we're going to make, we're, it's going to be special to be a, to be a Bronx. Aside from playing nail-biting games, the Bronx women's basketball team has been busy giving back to the community. In doing so, the women's basketball team has adopted their first little sister, Jocelyn Ortega.
but we just want to tell you, y'all are part of our family. Now, this is our first official little sister right here. The women's Bronx basketball team made it their mission to bring smiles to the faces of children at local hospitals. In doing so, they met little Jocelyn Ortega, who has been a great inspiration for the team as well. Both on and off the court, the Lady Bronx strive to make the community an essential part of their lives. For Bronx Country, this is Marianne Garcia. If you want to support these teams the same way they're out there supporting the community, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Hey Bronx fans, the inaugural UTPA Basketball Tip-Off Luncheon is coming up on Thursday, October 24th from 12 to 1.30 p.m. at the Embassy Suites in McAllen. You'll get to meet Bronx men's basketball head coach Dan Hipsher and women's basketball head coach Larry Tidwell, who will be speaking about their upcoming seasons. Tickets are just $25 each, a total of 150 tickets available, a bunch of which have already been sold, so if you're interested, you should probably take down the contact information on the screen and get in contact with Chelsea Blakely as quickly as possible. It's going to be a great event, and we look forward to seeing you there. Light week ahead for the Bronx, as volleyball hits the road for matches at Kansas City and Chicago State, while cross country competes at Incarnate Word. I'll be heading to Vegas with coaches Hipsher and Tidwell for the WAC basketball preview. We'll have full coverage of the event during a future edition of Bronx Country. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Bronx! Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. 
Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference.